Hello everyone, Eophonis Fanaticus here. If you've watched my recent update video, you will know that I was in the process of upgrading my desktop audio setup. To do that, I had to replace my Cord Mojo with a dedicated DAC and a dedicated amp. Well, here's the DAC. This is the Cord Cutis, and this is just going to be a short video of me unboxing it, checking out the inputs, outputs, accessories and controls. This piece of product is very expensive. It sells for $19.45 on Amazon. But where I live, it normally sells for around $17.60 US dollars. I managed to haggle a tiny bit and got it down to $1,600, which isn't too shabby at all. But I've got to admit, for such an expensive piece of product, it really doesn't do much. There is a digital to audio converter that is already built into anything that gives you audio output. Your motherboard has it, your DAP has it, even your phone has it. So what's the point of buying a separate, dedicated DAC that does exactly what is already available? Well, there's a difference between being able to get sounds and being able to get high fidelity sounds. A high quality audio component should be able to give you heaps of dynamic range with minimal noise, distortion, or changes to the frequency response, as well as many fine nuances in the technicality of the gear. In other words, it should give you something closest to what the file is encoded to be. And when you do become a stickler for such things, you have to go beyond the integrated stuff in electronic devices. Now, I wouldn't really identify myself as an audio snob, and I do understand that not everyone understands or cares to understand why such things matter. And every once in a while, even I would get lazy and leave my DAP at home and just use my phone for some music listening. But as an earphone reviewer, it is important for me to be able to trust that the audio source I have wouldn't taint the sound, such that I know what I say about an earphone is drawn from impressions under which the best condition has been provided. Besides, even if I don't end up hearing any differences at all, which I can already tell you is not the case, I still wouldn't want to have any doubts in my mind that the source could be a bottleneck. Anyway, enough rambling. The box is very textured and feels rather solid in hand. Flipping the flap over reveals a very nice looking art and a user manual. It goes over the inputs and outputs, which we will check out later on. There are also instructions on how to read the lights on the cutest when we change the digital filter, the source, the output voltage, and the sample rate. Now, since I bought mine in Hong Kong, I also got the manual in Chinese, and removing it reveals the cutest. But before we take it out, I just want to show you guys the art again. It says, designed and precision machines in United Kingdom. And yes, this is made in the UK, which probably explains the price when compared to your typical made in China electronics. And it's got Quartz logo on it, of course. All right, let's move on. I actually wanted to look at the accessories, which I thought would be important to show you guys if you're also interested in buying this, but don't know about the connectivity. All the accessories are packed into this Quartz branded bag. There's quite a lot here. We have the power supply that connects to the cutest through micro USB, and the power supply itself uses interchangeable socket adapters, which you can see here. Here's how it works. Ta-da! Simple as that. There's also this USB cable that connects the cutest to the computer in order to use it as a USB DAC. Okay, let's finally get to the cutest itself. It's a very solidly built brick with a fine texture and two funky looking orbs in the front. This is a signature design of Quartz products. The two orbs actually function as the controls for the filter and the input. On the back, starting from the left, there's the USB port for connecting to the computer, dual coaxial input, optical input, analog output, and the 5 volt power input. Now, going back to the manual just a quick second, it says that if you want to take advantage of the 768kHz and the DSD512 playback, you need to go for the USB input, whereas the dual coaxial input can be hooked up to the Quartz M scaler, which can apparently upscale 44.1kHz audio to 768kHz. Not sure why anybody would want to do that. Sounds like you would just be adding things that aren't supposed to be in the file, and in other words, you are distorting the original signal by adding noise. It's baffling why would anybody fall for such senseless gimmick. Since I don't care about the upscaling bullcrap, I'll stick to the USB input. 
Moving away from the back, the bottom has these tiny little feet for keeping the cuters from sliding on your desk. And that's all for the exterior. Lastly, I want to show you the lights. Let me just connect it to the power supply and here we go. We've got some disco lights going on. There are four filters built into the cuters and you can change it by pressing the filter button. That's simple enough. Here are the filters and their corresponding colors. Similarly, pressing the input button changes the, well, input. And they are again represented by different colors. The window can also show you the incoming sample frequency after the booting sequence. And again, the frequencies are represented by different colors. Pretty straightforward controls overall. To end off this video, I just want to do a quick size comparison so that if you also want to buy this, you know how big it is. Here's my Galaxy S10 Plus, and as you can tell, they are pretty much the same size aside from the thickness. And with that, that's the end of the unboxing. If you haven't checked out my unboxing of the Monolith THX887, which is part of my recent audio upgrades for my desktop computer alongside the Qtus, make sure to check it out. And finally, I know some of you have been waiting for my reviews to come back. Don't worry, I have one just around the corner, and this time it's gonna be a banger. So, stay tuned for my future unboxing and reviews. This is Eophonius Phoneticus, and I'll see you all again next time.